Thank you, Daniel. Uh, again, Ron Moriera, uh, my pronouns he, his, and I will be uh, doing the land acknowledgement uh, before we begin uh, this evening's webinar. Our anti-racist journey begins with the acknowledgement that we, as settlers and displanted people, reside on the unceded sacred land of Native American people. We are aware that the United States began with the conquest and genocide of indigenous people and grew its wealth from enslaved African forced labor. We in San Jose offer a land acknowledgement to the ancestors and descendants of this land who are now members of reorganized tribes and groups, including the Tamian tribe, Mawekma Ohlone tribe, confederated villages of Lishan, Himri and Ovaloni, Bay Miwok, Plains Miwok, Amamutsan, Tribal Band, and Indian Canyon Nation. They have inhabited and stewarded the unceded lands of the San Francisco Bay Area for thousands of years. We have much to learn from indigenous people, including the deep cultural and spiritual respect they demonstrate for our natural world. Wherever you are, we can all pause to acknowledge the native people whose land we are on. Remember that the next step after acknowledging these communities is to learn more, particularly about how you can support them directly. May we learn to walk in a humble and honorable way by acknowledging indigenous knowledge systems that lead to more sustainable and relational futures. Remember that the next step after acknowledging these communities is to learn more, particularly how you can support them directly. I'd like to turn it over now to Devin, who will walk us through this evening's agenda. Devin. Thanks, Ron. Hi, everyone. Uh, so quickly, I will share an overview of the session's agenda, um, which includes a background of the Resilient Artist Cohort. And in this uh, section of the uh, session this evening, we'll go over the summary of the Climate Smart San Jose, um, the mission of the San Jose Climate Art Program, and the objectives of the Resilient Artist Cohort. We'll also go over the program details and share information about the application process, which includes the structure of the program, overview of the workshops, um, eligibility criteria and expectations for applicants, as well as a step-by-step -step guide through the application portal. Um, and then after that, we will break for a Q&A session, um, open the floor for you all to, um, to kind of chime in with your questions and for us to follow up with clarifications about the program and the application. And, um, and at the end, we'll also share a, uh, a recap of the key points, um, sharing additional links and resources for further guidance. So quickly, um, I'd like to share with you a bit, a bit, a bit about myself. Um, my name is Devin Bella, and my pronouns are she and her. Um, I um, I joined the City of San Jose Office of Cultural Affairs this past October as the Climate Art Program Cultural Strategist, and in this role, I am collaborating with the San Jose Climate Smart team to engage the artists and cultural spaces in the city of San Jose's goal, uh, 2030 goal of carbon neutrality. Um, in addition to this position, I am also an independent art curator and museum professional, and my work is deeply committed to enhancing the role of artists and the power of art in contemporary society. And um, I specialize in the development and appreciation of artistic and curatorial practices uh, that seek to address and raise awareness of pressing social and environmental issues. Um, I'm not only passionate about advocacy, but I'm also a hands-on collaborator and contributor. Um, in 2020, I helped to co-found and began directing a collective called Art and Climate Action um, and located in the Bay Area. Um, and it, that is a platform dedicated to the intersection of art and climate activism. And um, I come to this work, my previous curatorial experience um, from the kind of global art world, uh, working with uh, mission-driven organizations, which includes uh, Catist uh, Art Foundation based in San Francisco and Paris, 
and where I operated um, and led curatorial affairs um, in the region of Latin America. I also um, was a senior curator and art advisor for Vital Voices Global Partnership, which is a women's leadership organization based in Washington, D.C. And um, I was previously the co-curator of the 2019 Honolulu Biennial. So you'll see some of those buttons there on this side about me. Um, again, I bring to this role and this program kind of a background that is focused on amplifying artworks and artists that reflect the lives and times of the global majority. And I have an artist-led uh, curatorial practice, and I'm also a firm believer in the power of art to drive uh, positive change. Okay, so quickly, I wanted to share that the Resilient Artist Cohort is an initiative of the San Jose Climate Art Program. And the purpose of the Climate Art Program is to build energy and community support around the city's 2030 goal of carbon neutrality. And the intention is to enlist the support of and reducing the carbon impact of the San Jose arts and culture sector. Um, the 20, the 2030 goal of carbon neutrality is a bold initiative that means eliminating net greenhouse gas emissions through uh, actions in three key areas, which is buildings, transportation, and power sources. So I've included some information here on the slide about that. Um, the motivations behind Climate Smart are the urgent need to combat climate change and, uh, and San Jose's leadership role as a major city to inspire others to take action. The benefits of this plan, of the Climate Smart Plan, if fully implemented, would include improved air quality, public health, job opportunities, and overall quality of life for residents. And um, the city has set forth uh, key strategies in, um, in buildings, which includes the transition of appliances to electric, especially for space and water heating and the areas of transportation, which include increasing electric vehicles and reducing vehicle travel. And it also encourages alternatives like walking, biking, and public transit. Um, and then finally, in our power sources to achieve 100% carbon neutral electricity through the San Jose Clean Energy. Um, the city's climate smart plan also focuses on community engagement. And I think this is important to note um, how this program fits in. The plan emphasizes open and transparent processes that will gather input from all community members. It's a comprehensive and ambitious roadmap that aims to create a sustainable future for the city and its residents. So with Climate Smart as a roadmap, the Climate Art Program was conceived to enlist, um, as I mentioned earlier, San Jose's artists and creative producers, cultural institutions as active agents in achieving the city's ambitious goals. And the objectives are to raise public awareness and engagement with climate action, utilizing the arts and culture sector's power to shape public opinion and advocate for climate solutions. Next, to reduce the carbon footprint of the cultural sector. This means implementing sustainable practices in art spaces, productions, and event art events to lower emissions and resource consumption. And in addition to that, to build a model of sustainability for the arts and establish San Jose's cultural sector as a leading example of environmental responsibility, inspiring others. Um, across the Bay and beyond to follow suit. And finally, to increase market demand for sustainable solutions and create incentives and platforms for arts organizations to procure eco-friendly goods and services, um, really kind of driving the market demand for low carbon products. So now that we've established those objectives, uh, we wanted to share three key initiatives of the climate Art program. 
The first being the Resilient Artist Cohort and why, we're all why we are all here today. And um, this is a pilot program offering workshops and support to help artists adapt their practices for environmental resilience and lower emissions. The next piece is of the, of the pilot year is a carbon neutral creative network. And this is a collaborative platform connecting arts organizations and environmental networks who are committed to de decarbonization by 2030 and who will also advance climate action together. And third is a resource hub, which will serve as a shared online platform for exchanging materials and resources related to sustainable arts practices. So in summary, the overall impact of the climate art program is that it seeks to leverage the power of art to not only raise awareness about climate change, but also actively empowers and mobilizes San Jose's cultural sector to contribute to a more sustainable and resilient future in San Jose. Okay, so now I'd like to dig into the Resilient Artist Cohort a bit more and share with you the overview and primary objectives. So we are inviting 15 San Jose artists who join this cohort and participate in the pilot program, which is aimed to measure, assess, and adapt artistic practices to be more resilient to climate effects and lower in greenhouse gas emissions. Artists will participate in intensive workshop learning from experts from around the glo globe alongside locals in San Jose, encompassing an art-centered approach to environmental resilience. Um, the primary goals for the cohort is to benchmark and begin to understand the environmental impact of artistic practices, uh, to gain knowledge about how to adapt artistic materials, techniques, and studio operations for sustainability, and share those learnings within and beyond the cohort community. And finally, uh, take action by developing individual strategies for navigating the the effects of climate change on artistic work um, and livelihoods and building resilience in the face of environmental challenges. Um, the intention of the cohort is to help reduce the carbon footprint of San Jose's art sector while inspiring and promoting climate action through creative practices um, and really building a network of climate conscious artists in San Jose. So now uh, here's more information about the program details. Uh, first, starting with important dates. Uh, the application is due on Sunday at the end of the day, uh, February 4th at 11.59 p.m. There, shortly thereafter, there will be a panel review that takes place on February 15th. And the approval and announcements will take place in early March uh, between the 4th and the 15th. And um, the cohort session and the program period runs from June through August this summer. Um, and I'll talk about the learning sessions and dates of um, those that cohort period in a moment. But for now, just wanted to focus on the eligibility piece um, and talk about that a little bit more. The applicant must be a working artist living or working in the city of San Jose or can be an individual artist applying on behalf of a collective. Uh, artists working in visual arts, film slash moving image, technology and new media are welcome to apply. Artists in any phase of their artistic career can apply including emerging mid-career and established artists. Uh, applicants must be at least 18 years old and cannot be enrolled as a full-time student at the time of the application or during the cohort period. And lastly, uh, artists should be reflective of or able to demonstrate strong ongoing relationships with the climate art program priority communities. Uh, using the California Healthy Places Index, also known as HPI, the San Jose Climate Art Program prioritizes artists rooted in or connected to communities in areas facing the highest barriers to environmental safety, such as downtown, Alum Rock, East Foothills, 
Burbank, Buena, and Edenville Seven Trees. The program also focuses on empowering artists from communities disproportionately affected by environmental hazards and economic disparities, including Latinx, Asian, Black, Indigenous, Pacific Islander, LGBTQ+, people with disabilities, and women. And we'll talk about how applicants will address many of these eligibility aspects of the program when I do a quick walkthrough of the application in just a moment. Um, before we go there, I just want to continue with a few more program details. For artist compensation, the total honorarium amount is $5,000 US dollars for each artist to participate in the program. Uh, this is a non-benefited stipend that will be fiscally administered by partners, uh, Local Color and Work San Jose of the Climate Art Program. Uh, the compensation will be distributed in multiple installments and the applicant must be willing and able to meet the requirements associated with receiving funds. Uh, the funds are intended to cover each artist's time to participate in the cohort and to be used at each artist's discretion. Uh, for the cohort requirements, artists must participate in all three phases of the cohort period, which include uh, multiple learning sessions, individual studio visits, modifications of one to two areas of practice that can reduce environmental impact and, um, and participate in a final cohort listening session. Okay, so now uh, here are the three phases of the cohort structure and timeline, which I previously mentioned. Phase one focuses on cohort learning and community building. So this first phase consists of four learning sessions taking place over four consecutive weekends in June. This is on Saturdays, June 8th, June 15th, June 22nd, and June 29th. All meetings are in person on Saturday mornings with hybrid settings to accommodate remote speakers as well as in-person uh, conversations and to record presentations. Um, the descriptions of the learning sessions will be covered uh, shortly in another, in another slide, but quickly I wanted to talk about phase two, which is focus on independent reflection with co coaching support. So during phase two, each artist member of the cohort will receive individual support from myself, including office hours and studio visits during the month of July. And I'd like to note that there are no group cohort meetings as a, as a group altogether scheduled during that period. Um, then finally, in phase three, we'll reconvene and share back. The final phase of the program will bring all 15 members of the cohort back together after artists have, take, have been able to reflect on their work, some of the learnings in the phase one session and make progress on climate mitigation and adaptation. Um, this meeting is scheduled for uh, August 24th. And I should say everything is somewhat subject to change, but this is the, the general outline and we hope to stick to it. So next I'd like to dig a little deeper into the learning opportunities and summarize those sessions that I've outlined in June. So there are four sec sessions and they are focused on the first ones on artistic centering and cohort building. And this includes goal setting um, activities to foster collaboration and shared learning. The next, uh, the next is uh, the next session number two is on studio operations and uh, with workshops that are designed to help artists make informed decisions about where they work. Um, their energy and transportation choices. And then the next session, number three, is looking at materials and processes, artistic materials and processes, and understanding the impact of artist materials, different techniques, and uh, different 
infrastructures like exhibition making or commissions, that kind of thing. And finally, uh, moving on to the fourth session is embracing adaptation. So taking what was learned alongside um, some of the goals that were set at the beginning of the of the phase, as well as some of your individual uh, kind of ambitions with your own individual practice, um, I, alongside understanding and preparing for local climate effects and creating personalized action plans and making individual changes. So now that I've gone through the scope of the program and the cohort and sharing a summary and objectives, we thought it'd be helpful to run through the application. Um, so when you click on one of the links that you would have received, um, or when you're on the web page of the Climate Art Program, it'll take you to the slide room portal. So I will go ahead and switch over to that portal, just a moment. Okay, so when you click on the link to apply, it brings you to the Resilient Artist Cohort uh, page in Slide Room. And at the top, it will um, give you an overview um, of the program as I've kind of laid out, laid out earlier. And it'll have some, include some links. Um, you'll hit this button this begin application button, and it'll show you how to um, create an account and log in. If you already have a slide room account, you can, I believe that you can use that already. And one of the helpful links in on this page is this, um, the application template. So we've essentially created a carbon copy of the application. So you don't have to necessarily be in the portal if you wanna work on some of the answers or some of the materials that are requested. So um, I'm gonna click on that so that we can have a look and I can kind of walk you through the application as it is laid out in the portal. Um, so when you enter in to slide room, it's going to share with you information about the application review and um, and some of the um, how some of the answers and materials provided will be reviewed and scored um, based on applicant responses. And there's six uh, pieces, which is the uh, the relevance of the, your statement of interest, your priority community connection, um, how you demonstrate um, your artistic practice and commitment to your artistic practice, um, your artistic materials and techniques used and relevance of your art creation or studio environment to the program objectives, um, as well as your ideas and themes that are driving your work. There are some additional factors that aren't scored, uh, but are required to complete the application, which is your uh, connection to San Jose, um, how you will um, commit to the program, your artistic discipline and medium, and your level of environmental awareness. Um, I wanna quickly note that with um, artistic discipline, when you're filling that out, um, there'll be a drop-down menu um, as, and um, also when you're in the fields or in the portal, you can give uh, text answers. You can type in your answers to the requested questions and application materials. You can also record and upload um, an audio file if you'd like to narrate those answers instead. And so at the top of the 
Um, at the application, you have your form where you fill out your primary artist information. So your pronouns, any second name you go by, um, you'll describe your connection to San Jose. Um, you'll say whether or not you're applying by yourself or as a collective, and you'll give additional information as references your website, Instagram, LinkedIn, and other social media uh, information and in, uh, in addition to your bio and how you heard about this opportunity. Scrolling down, you'll also include uh, about nine to 10 pieces of information that include your interests and description about you and your work. Uh, so the first one being your statement of interest and um, you'll describe kind of why you're interested in this opportunity. Um, kind of what kind of impact you'd like to make by joining. Um, and um, from there, you'll talk about your connection to the priority communities um, and kind of highlighting your experience with one or more that are identified in the program description. Um, and there's also information in the application as a, as reference material if you need that. And moving on, you'll fill out your artistic discipline and medium, as I was mentioning before, um, there'll be a drop down menu where you can select your discipline and medium. And if something isn't there, there's also a box to fill out uh, for you to kind of um, put that information in. Uh, Primarily, we are focused in this pilot year on visual arts, uh, and we're not accepting applications for performing arts um, and literature at this time, but um, hopefully that the categories are broad enough that all of you that are here and interested will find a way to participate and identify there. Um, Next is the level of artistic experience where you'll say simply if you're emerging mid-career or established. Um, you'll also in the next section talk about your artistic production, um, giving the panelists a picture of what you're doing and how you are doing it, what materials and mediums and techniques you're using, um, giving us giving the, app, uh, the panelists a good sense of what's involved in making your work and your role in the creative process. You'll also talk about your artistic location um, and give the panelists a sense of your current workspace, whether you work out of a studio, you work out of home, you're in a shared facility, or if you're itinerant, um, it's and your connection to that space, um, whether you rent or you own or sublease, borrow, um, and given the nature of this program, it's important just to give the panelists a clear picture of your work environment and your relationship to this space and, and where you produce your work. And I should um, mention that there's no right or wrong answer here. It's really just to kind of give the panelists insight to kind of where artists would be coming from to, that as they participate in this cohort. Um, next, you will describe what your work is about. Um, talking about some of the themes or subjects or ideas that your work explores. You'll again, try to give the panelists a sense of like the main ideas driving your work. Um, and then in these last two questions, you'll um, share your understanding of environmental resilience, kind of outline your familiarity uh, with climate and environmental sustainability and or environmental justice. Um, and you can share your experience here working on um, projects in that area. And um, I'd also like to note here that prior experience in sustainability and environmental resilience is not mandatory. You do not need to have any background in this area to participate. And finally, we just they want to give the panelists a sense of um, if you can fully commit to participating in the program, um, adhering to the workshop timeline and uh, the learning session dates. 
and that you will actively engage in the community cohort building and embrace kind of open communication and feedback because we are in a pilot year and that engagement is really key. So in addition to those questions, you'll upload and share descriptions of past work. Um, and I, um, you'll include, if you, as you're including files, media, different media types, images, video, audio, or PDF, um, whatever they are, you'll also include a description um, and a list of the submitted project images that clearly explain the projects and images so that the panelists can um, get a good sense, a visual sense of your work. Um, so that is the, um, that brings us to the end. And I will switch over back to my slides. I'm going to Stop share for a moment again. Okay, so, so before we wanted to um, wrap up and transition to the question and answer period. We want to acknowledge our funders. The City of San Jose Climate Art Program is launching with the support of the Bay Area Creative Corps, also known as BACC, um, and that is administered by the San Francisco Foundation and funded by the California Arts Council. And the collective goal of these programs is to use creativity uh, to advance equity and well being in key sectors um, and drive support for priority communities that are facing some of the highest barriers to environmental safety. So, in conclusion, um, that brings us to kind of the key, a recap of the key points uh, covered. And um, so quickly, that is the deadline to apply is February 4th. And there is a $5,000 um, unrestricted uh, stipend. The, um, there are 15 artists uh, that will be submitted or uh, entering into the cohort and the, focused on environmental and sustainability resilience. Uh, the cohort sessions run from June through August 24, or August 2024, this summer. And, um, and this is a learning and relationship building opportunity alongside uh, deep digging deeper into environmental and sustainability resilience. And if you have any questions, um, I have included my email on the slide. It's also um, included in the application materials. Please do not hesitate to reach out and contact me for any questions or any assistance um, on filling out the information. So I will stop here. And before I do, um, I just wanna thank you all for uh, joining the information session this evening, and thank you for your interest. And um, and I will we'll go ahead and answer some questions. Okay, we have a few questions in the in the chat, and um, Deb and I'll throw these out, and some I answered in chat, and then a few just came in. Um, so. Uh, the, the first question was, if an artist is part of a two-person collective, will each member of the collective receive $5,000? If one member of the collective can't make a meeting, will the other member attendance still count? Um, so that's a really good question. And um, I think that we really want to maintain consistency throughout this um, throughout this cohort. And I would recommend that identifying one person in your collective to attend the sessions, the learning sessions throughout for that degree of continuity. Um, I think that 
would that would be something to note in your application if that um, if there are barriers to participating um, that one wouldn't be able to continue throughout um, to represent the collective to definitely let us know. Um, uh, but that would be my recommendation um, that you identify someone in the collective to uh, participate throughout the three uh, phases of the project. Thank, thank you. And then the, the second question is um, the hours, uh, the, the Saturday hours in June. Yeah, so that we've um, we blocked out 9.30 to one o'clock with the idea that 9.30 to 10 is um, kind of a, a, a light breakfast uh, warm up and with a core learning happening bet between 10 to noon, followed by lunch, so that everyone um, can wrap up and be on their way at, by one o'clock. Okay, um, thank you. And then th this next two kind of similar questions, but artists are, are, are artists required to make an artwork during this? Is like, they're, they're the, the, I guess the question is a to clarif clarification question. If they're 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 asked to participate in this, not to create an artwork, we're not commissioning them to create new artwork, for example. Um, but it but really to participate that this would also help um, provide uh, and build these initiatives for the future. That's right. Yeah. You the um, there's no expectation to create an artwork out of the end or during this program. Um, the, the main um, outcome in terms of um, other than participate in the learning, meeting one-on-one -on -one, um, would be making, identifying those one to two things in your practice, in your studio operations that you can chain and change and adapt and start working on those. That would be kind of the more concrete outcomes like that you could have, you know, uh, that might be equivalent to uh, an artwork at the end that um, most of you are probably used to. Uh, then, uh, um, okay, so how can, how can selected artists continue to support this initiative after the cohort is ended? Well, that I, I love that question. Thank you for asking that. Um, I think the the idea where so that I should have said at the outset that so the climate art program is really designed as a multi year multi phase project and um, and so this first year is really kind of focusing on this resilient artist cohort. But we're also developing uh, this uh, this network, this uh, carbon neutral network. And I think as an individual artist, your participation um, following the cohort would be really key as part of that network um, and vocalizing the needs and interests and um, some of the things that you were able to achieve through the cohort in that network. Um, I'd like to see kind of a phase uh, a say, let's say like a phase two of the cohort, um, but that would still be in development uh, likely over the course of um, this year and into next year. Um, I think that the, the main point being that continued involvement in the program overall would be best case scenario. Thanks, Evan. Um, I'm gonna ask this, this question, then we'll go to, to Rayos. Um, okay, so what if you don't have a studio or studio practice? Like, how do you how do you um, talk about uh, the participating in sustainability without like the the um, production space? And I guess you can say, yeah. So this is something that we've thought about. Um, you know, we come to this work with artistic backgrounds and understanding that um, everyone's practice takes form in a, in a different way. So not everyone operates out of a studio. Um, for uh, and If you're not operating out of a studio, you're often maybe working on projects or you're invited to do um, an exhibition with uh, a gallery um, or maybe it's a commission. And so it might be that um, 
some of the, the energy aspects are going to be things that you learn about and um, you can share that information with others. But then some of the things that you will kind of identify in your works that don't say apply to like studio updates or studio adaptation might apply to more material areas of your practice or some of the arts and culture infrastructure that we all navigate like exhibition making or commissions. Um, there's many other aspects that can be uh, focused in on um, in, in addition to or instead of some of the studio aspects um, that we're more um, maybe accustomed to for studio practice artists. And then um, here's a good question is if you are, if you are currently participating in another program funded by Office of Cultural Affairs, um, are you eligible for this? And I'm going to actually let Ron answer that question. Great. Thank you, Danielle. Um, as this is a pilot program, because we have uh, one of our key areas that we've been focusing on strengthening is our support and developing opportunities for individual artists. So if you are um, a current, uh, you know, recipient uh, or participant of one of our artist programs, um, we don't discourage you to apply, but we would like for you to reflect in terms of the commitment of the particular program that you're already part of and the um, requirements and commitment that the resilient artist cohort will also be expecting. Um, plus, you know, when people, when the artists apply, uh, it will be, you know, there will be a, a process in terms of selection. Um, so uh, with that said, you know, we want to provide as many opportunities for artists and to be able to spread out the wealth as it is um, so that we have more artists um, engaged with a large number of our, you know, expanding programs and opportunities. Um, hopefully, you know, I, I address that. This, again, this is a pilot. We've never had uh, as many uh, individual artist opportunities uh, here at the Office of Cultural Affairs. And as, as you can see, we're strengthening and, and expanding that. Um, so it's something that uh, we want the artists to also think about when they're applying to this program. And that's what part of this information session is all about. It's about the, the commitment um, as well as time and effort. So um, looking at your bandwidth, both as a practicing artist, uh, as well as maybe a current participant of uh, one of our artists, uh, OCA programs, and then considering applying to the Resilient Artists Cohort. I hope that you will, you know, look at all those pieces, uh, take that in consideration, uh, should you consider applying for the uh, Resilient Artists Cohort. Thanks, Ron. All right, another question in here. Are artists expected to work on a project or present to the community in which they live uh, involving climate resilience, what we learn in class, like what, like, you know, the, we talked a little bit about, I think this kind of comes in a little bit with the question, following question about the uh, priority communities um, and, and how, how this knowledge, you know, the, the knowledge bearers of this cohort then connect back into the community. Um, is, is there um, a, a, a set presentation for that or how, how is that tie in happening? Um, I anticipate that question coming up um, throughout the course of the cohort period um, and would be possibly something that we talk about in that share back. Um, once you've kind of looked more inward and kind of identified things in your own practice, maybe at the towards the end of the cohort, starting to kind of think about more outward uh, presentations or um, community development pieces. It would not be something you're expected to do as a cohort member, but definitely something we would talk about um, kind of how we materialize and visualize and engage some of these things that, um, that we're focused on over the summer and, and really kind of move move to that that community piece because it is so uh, fundamental to the program overall. Um, but really the kind of intention of the summer and the cohort period is to really kind of focus on the support for, um, for you as artists. And, and I will add to that, as artists are natural community builders, 
and they are natural sharers of resources and natural sharers of information. And um, in, in, in your own way, um, you would share with your community that you're connected to um, or in other communities of artists and communities that are not artists, families, everybody is part of multiple communities, multiple networks, and we cross over those in so many different ways. And, uh, and this is how, this is how knowledge sh gets shared, knowledge gets spread because you, you're not only like you, you have your, your most, most artists are multi-hyphenated part of multiple communities, multiple networks. Most people are in general. And, um, there, there will be an encouragement to let people know what you've learned and uh, not just keep it to yourself. Um, but in terms of formality of it, um, that's not what the, um, because we really want you to be able to focus on yourself and your, and, and how you're thinking about this. It's, it's not where we're leading, but we are setting up structures to help, um, build that on as we go forward, because we look at those who are attending as, as leaders, as leaders and, um, and leaders share, um, in different ways and art comes out in different ways, even if you're not even um, doing it intentionally. But there's also this resource hub that we're, we're working on building out. And part of that will also be tying in to that resource hub. And we're still developing what that's going to look like and, and what and how that's going to be realized. But that's going to be another thing that um, that that people will be able to to connect out to. But but really trying to prioritize and support artists that come from these um, communities uh, it, it is central to what we're, we're doing. And, and um, this is, um, you know, and, and with the hope that this will end up um, really um, filtering out naturally. All right, do we have any more questions? I know that was, um, Quite a bit, and these are really, really important questions that are being asked. I think they're very, um, like, insightful and thoughtful. Um, and I think this is that's exactly sort of um, folks that we're looking to bring in is like ask questions and think about that. So, um, do we have any more? Any without any more questions on there? Um, I think that we're we're close to being wrapped up. I think that, I guess like just to reiterate the final question was like how to target a how will target targeted neighborhoods benefit to the artists working in those areas? And I think the answer to that was just that we're um, looking at how do we uh, actually like uh, um, as you learn, how do you share that information outward? And there's not a formal way to do that, but we're hoping that this will come with the resource hub, with it, with the carbon neutral network, um, and just with your own um, energy and networks. Will any scientific data be taken before, during, or after the program to to determine any impact on emission changes? That's a good question. We don't have a plan for that, but we, there are. Um, um, in, Devin, you want to talk about some of the some of the uh, carbon calculator stuff that um that will be part of uh, i guess more the 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 july um one on one time well yeah so um well in the first session actually um or the second session in june um we'll be doing a few how to carbon calculate uh, we'll be looking at some of the calculator tools that are available and designed specifically for the arts and culture sector where you can go in and say um you can analyze an exhibition or a project that you've worked on um especially if it involved any kind of travel or any kind of shipping you can um there are tools out there that you will be provided with and shown how to use um, to assess your uh, carbon emissions. Um, and so that is something that um, we'll learn how to do in that second session um, in in June. And then as you go on, as Danielle was mentioning in July, that second phase where um, you're kind of determining what you'd like to adapt or what you'd like to look at more closely, um, you can uh, actually perform the calculation during that period. They're really designed to be uh, quick and easy. Um, as long as you, you do a little bit of data collection on your own initially, um, but they can be done within a couple hours of time. Um, 
And um, especially if you have like access to um, like your energy bills or something like that. But even if you don't, if you tracked information about a recent project, you um, did an exhibition, um, say in Los Angeles, and you sent work down there, or you packed it in your car and you drove it down, you can calculate the miles and determine that. Um, so that we, um, I know that's being done across the visual arts sector on a whole with an emphasis on like larger scale institutions. Um, there are projects out there that we can talk about and learn about that are collecting data um, for the sector as a whole. Um, and then, um, but in the meantime, we'll kind of, we, we'll look at some things that are available for individual artistic practice. The other thing I wanted to mention, the, the data collecting that we'll be doing actually be really key. Um, after each session, we will intend to have a survey for you um, as participants to provide feedback. And so along the way that, um, you know, from, from, phase to phase, from year to year, that we can adapt and evolve the program that's really based on your, your input um, as participants and your feedback and aspirations. Um, so in terms of like data collection, um, that's something actually we're probably um, more focused on at the moment so that we can really shape something um, that's really responding to the needs and interests of you as artists, as well as community members. And, um, but I think what we probably could do if, if the cohort does, if everyone in the cohort did a carbon calculation, we could look at those things together as a result and kind of look at them side by side, um, and compare and contrast, um, those, um, emission calculations among other other calculations that we could do. And we had another question here. Is a is a similar program happening in other sectors and industries in San Jose, like or tech and automotive? Um, I I don't know much about other industries or other sectors. Uh, do you, Daniel? Well, I, I know that there is a really strong emphasis on small businesses. Um, there's a there's a really strong green um, building program. The architecture um, industry building and, and, and development uh, has really been pushed on to do this for a long time, especially to meet um, the Title 24 standards, which are basically the, the building codes, which are all quite um, sustainable. And so there has been a strong emphasis on education and that is spread to like um, those who work in the HVAC um, world. But there are a lot of initiatives um, in, in, in tech with their own sustainability officers who, who go through section by section. But I know that there's been quite a few, um, especially um, uh, in the, in the business area. Um, are there similar programs happening in other cities um, in, in the Bay Area for collaboration? Um, not in the Bay Area. I mean, the Artist ACA, which um, Devin is part of, has been working um, uh, really well with the museums and galleries on helping them do it, uh, do their carbon analysis and, and um, plan. In San Jose, you know, we have the, the museum, San Jose Museum of Art and the ICA both have participated in this. Um, several other, like on the institution level, but in terms of the individual artist level, um, in terms of a program similar to this, there isn't an, that much of an equivalent. There is though in other countries, like in the UK, there was a very, very strong presence um, with a lot of organizations like Julie's Bicycle and Galleries Commit. And then there's um, in Canada, they have a very robust program through all, all of Canada called the um, Creative Carbon Tools um, Canada, which is based off of the Julie's Bicycle model. And then there's out of Berlin, there's um, Key Culture. But we're the only ones that we've been able to identify in the U.S. that are doing this program. So this will be the first in the country. So um, I think that's that's it. If you have further questions, feel free to reach out to Devin or myself. 
Um, and I think um, that, that you know, we are at time at six o'clock. We were able to um, really wrap this up in, in one hour, but um, I encourage you all to tell other people. We do have 15 openings for this. So this is a very um, uh, uh, great opportunity and, and it, and this is about your time um, that that it takes, but it, but also interest. Um, so um, we do hope you consider applying, and please do sh um, um, share with others. And um, thank you all for attending today. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks, Ron. Thank you all for joining. Again, yeah. If you have any questions, any doubts, please let me know. I'm happy to speak with you.